Hey guys, John here. Today we're in one of my favorite synths, Hive 2, and today's patch is actually going to be relatively simple, right? We're not going to be doing any macros, nothing like that, just a very simple and effective bass because sometimes if we're writing a song or putting something together and we need a quick bass to either fill up the void or maybe we want something rhythmic and we really don't have to spend too much time on it with this type of technique. So what we can do, let's right click and go to init preset. We have a sound wave, let's obviously turn this guy up a little bit. Something kind of like that, right? So first thing, it's not, it's gonna be a mono bass. So we can go up here to the voice mode and right off the bat, we can go to mono. So we can only hit one note at a time. Okay, so we have our sawtooth, right? And we can give it a little bit of use, maybe two or three depending, but don't overdo this. A slight bit of detune. And we don't want the width too stereo, right? We kind of want to focus the bass a little bit more in the center. Something like that might be kind of cool. And for me personally, I don't know if this makes too much of a difference, but I feel like it does. So the phase shouldn't be random. I do like flow, right? If there's anything that you're kind of unfamiliar with Hive, you can always check out the course. I'm gonna include it in the, uh, in the video description below. But anyway, so we have something like this, right? So we have our first oscillator, which is a saw wave, couple voices of unison, a little detuning, and we're dropping down the width. All right. So the next thing that we want to add is a sub, right? So the way to route that into our filter is by just clicking sub one. Okay, so we have a pulse, that's cool. We can absolutely use that. However, I kind of like using a triangle on the sub. Something kind of like this here. So for example, if we took this guy out, we have this sub. Right, and then at this point, we can bring this back in and we can kind of balance out the volume between the two. So we have our sub here. So maybe something kind of like that. So they're pretty much balanced with each other. And this is to taste, but anyway. Okay, so we have something like that. So now this is our core sound. You might be like, okay, that's a kind of a weird sounding bass. So the next is going to be in a little bit of a modulation. So we can bring down this cutoff here. And for this patch, I generally like either using the clean engine or the dirty engine. We're gonna see both in just a little bit, but we're gonna start off with the clean. So if we hit something, we don't really hear anything because we're chopping off so many frequencies, right? So this is where the mod envelope comes in. So we can increase this to the right. Now this mod envelope is basically gonna be this envelope right here, this modulation envelope, which is basically going to be modulating this cutoff every time we hit a note. And how much you want this open is really gonna be up to you. That's kind of gonna be the fine tuning for your patch, right? Once you set all this up, this is gonna be one of those screws where you kind of keep tweaking it to fit your track the best. So for now, I guess let's do something like this here. Give it some resonance too. Okay, so now it comes to a point where, okay, do you want this, bang, this bass to sustain or do you kind of want some bass plucks? So we can do both, but for now let's do this here. So let's drop this sustain down pretty much all the way for now. It's kind of gonna go like that. And we wanna do that on the amp envelope too as well. So remember this amp decay is how long it takes for the note to decay for the amplitude. And then this decay is gonna be how long the filter cutoff takes to decay. So if you want a little bit more snappy, we can bring down the decays. It's really up to you. Okay. Okay, so we have a pretty much basic sound here. So now once we go to the effects, this is gonna be right where it's like, oh, okay, I see what's going on here. So one thing I do like to put on the compressor, start increasing the amount here. And we can sometimes bring down the output in case that's a little bit too much. Okay, so we have a pretty decent bass sound here. Okay, and what I also like to do is add a little bit of distortion, kind of give a little bit extra harmonics there, but don't overdo this guy. Maybe something just like that. It sounds pretty cool. So now I'll do a little bit of EQing, and this is kind of to taste, but so for example, a little bit on the highs, I kind of like where this comes by default. We can just increase our highs a little bit. Get a little clarity. And then with the mid, it's really up to you as far as cutting out some of that mud, right? So we can bring this up here. We can kind of find where that's at. Maybe some of that stuff. Kind of a little boxy. Kind of bring that back just a little bit there. And then for our bass, we can bring this up and see which, which spawn of the frequency that we want to bring up a little bit. So right there might be kind of cool. So that's quite a balance. So we can always bring this back a little bit like that. 
And you can always use a more accurate EQ post if you'd like to as well. Totally up to you. So we have something kind of like that. Now, a couple more tricks I like to use is generally people say, don't put reverb on basses. And I see where that is coming from, but sometimes it's nice to give the bass a little bit of a virtual room, which is kind of cool. So if we turn on our reverb, that kind of off the bat destroys it, right? So we do want to bring down the decay significantly and the size. And this is going to be very apparent if you're wearing headphones and kind of following along with this. But these should be very low values and the mix should be low as well. So we have the definition and the clarity and the punch of that bass. Right, so nice little bass pluck there. Would work actually very good in house music. Okay, so we have something kind of like that. And if we take this reverb off, we're gonna just really notice something's kind of weird. It's a very subtle kind of thing where it's like, the bass isn't completely dry. There's a little bit something there. It's very fine tuning, but anyway. Okay, cool. We have something kind of like that. And another thing that sometimes I like to add, depending on your style, is a little bit of chorus, but be careful with this one. Bring down the wet a little bit, maybe increase the depth and drop the rate down. It's kind of what I generally do here. So if we have a low dry wet value, it still gives us a very cool texture and a sound to it. We see that like we know it's a chorusy kind of bass, but we're not washing out the entire bass. So we have something kind of cool like that. So let's bring up our tempo just a little bit, maybe something kind of more 134, something like that. So now we have a pretty cool sound here, right? So if you increase our drum volume here and then let's take a listen to this with drums. Right, we can do some cool little rhythmic things if we want to and kind of make it interesting, right? Or what we can also do as well is use this as a bass arm. So now we have the basic recipe of this bass and now we can decide, okay, do we want this to be an art bass, which is really cool as well, or do we want this to be like a house bass and kind of make our own groove and rhythmic ad <laughs> rhythm out of that? We can do that as well. So if it's kind of like this, kind of like a snappy, plucky kind of bass, that's where an arp can be really cool. Right, something kind of like that with a kick drum. Right, pretty cool. I also like doing two octaves as well. Kind of gives it a little bit more character. So yeah, that's a pretty simple recipe here. And the difference between the clean and the dirty is kind of apparent and really depends on what you're going for. I think these terms are actually very accurate. So we have a clean one and then a dirty sound, I suppose. Both sound good too once you crank the resonance. The normal will sound a lot different with the resonance. So check this out. A little bit more of that like boinginess, which is cool if that's what you're going for. Both really fits it. If you're doing like a clean, pretty, pristine, very smooth shaven track, then you might want to go with clean. If you want a little bit of hair on it, go for the dirty one. Both are pretty good results. So now we have that, but let's say we don't want the R. We can turn this guy off and maybe we want something more sustained, right? Because sometimes we want to hold down a bass and really feel that low end shake us into eternity. So that really has to do with our sustain levels for our amplifier and also for our modulation envelope. So we can increase this sustained here and it's gonna be sustaining, but it's not really going to be sustaining the frequencies that we want. So that's kind of why we have to bring both of these up here. Kind of sustain like that or even match it over to our decay. And then also we haven't really talked too much about the release. 
give it a little bit of room to breathe. Very cool. So one thing I do want to uh, kind of tell you about, so with Hive, the attack by default comes at one, right? So if you load up a fresh preset, the attack time is gonna be one, which is quick. We can always bring it down to zero, which is gonna be even quicker. And you're gonna get a slightly more attack, right? A faster attack. So yeah, I guess there's, there's no way to really describe that. The attack is faster. And we can do that on the mod envelope too, if we want to. You can make some really cool things like that. And you can always go with this sequencer as well and make something really interesting in this sequencer page. So this base is very versatile. It's simple to make, it sounds cool, it's clean. And the last thing that we do want to talk about here, actually two things. So one, this is kind of clean. One thing that I think is kind of cool as well that I've done in some other patches is using the second oscillator to kind of make it a little bit more hairy or more impactful, I suppose. So if we have our second oscillator, we can go to the second oscillator in our filter. So now we hear this, we can bring down that volume. Maybe give it, give it some unison like seven or something like that. So this is just this bass. Cool, and then we can drop this down an octave. Give it kind of that like grungy, nasty sawtooth bass. And this volume is going to determine how loud that is. So now a cool little trick here. So we have our amps or our amp and our mod envelopes set up how we like them to. So you don't have to copy this exactly by the faders. You can always click here, copy this amp one, and then go here and copy and then paste this. So we have the same value. So you can do something like that. So you might be wondering why we're not sending it to this filter. And this filter is kind of more set up to do this oscillator and this sub here. Whereas this one, we can kind of have a little bit more control. So for example, let's copy our mod envelope and paste it over here. So we have the same one. And then now let's bring down our cutoff a little bit and give us some mod depth here. I still have a nasty bass that can really do a lot of things. We can make it a pluck bass, we can make an art bass, a sequence bass, a sustained bass, really whatever, whatever it is we want to do. Right, it kind of like punches out to us. But yeah, so that's kind of the recipe for this one. This video went a little bit longer than intended. It's a very simplistic bass, but I kind of did want to explain some of the process and the thought behind a time of bass like this. So yeah, hopefully you have learned something from this and it's a really cool technique to use if you're ever in a bind. I know the video went longer that it should take to uh, to make this type of patch. But once you kind of get those concepts down of just doing that sawtooth for the beginning, maybe a little bit of unison just to kind of give it a little bit of extra width, I suppose. And then a sub triangle on the bottom messing your filters. Anyway, you, you know you've watched the video at this point, so you should get this idea at this point. But uh, yeah, hopefully this bass is useful for you. You can really do this in any synthesizer out there. I just like how it comes out in Hive, and it's a very easy way to explain in this synth here. So yeah, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.